Hey guys, so today I'm going to be trying to recreate MKBHD's new 2023 intro using Blender and DaVinci Resolve. Now I've seen this other guy, Patrick Sterling, actually also remake the MKBHD intro animation. Boing. But he actually remade it completely in DaVinci Resolve using like the 3D engine and all that stuff and I don't know anything about that. Which is why I'm doing it in Blender. So this beginning part right here you can see is going to be recreated with Blender and DaVinci Resolve and this part is going to be recreated with only DaVinci Resolve in Fusion. So um yeah, I'm pretty excited to show you guys how I'm going to recreate this. So I'm going to make this second part first because it looks easier and then I'm going to do the first part last because obviously this looks much harder to do. So I'm going to start with an empty project you can see right here. I'm going to go to Effects and then drag down a Fusion Composition and I'm going to make it roughly two seconds long and then I'm going to click on it and go to Fusion. And now I'm over here in my Fusion page. Now you can tell by the video that there's this little like grid in the back. So I'm going to add the grid node. So the correct grid node is not in here in tools. It's actually in open effects. And there you'll find the grid node. And then after I have this grid node, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a background node connected to the media out. So I'm going to select the color right here, pick screen color, and then just select the background and hit OK. And now the background is actually the same color. And then I'm going to put this grid node in between the background and the media out, and I'm just going to connect them. And now you can see the grid. So you can see that there are these lines here that are thicker. I don't really want that. I'm just going to change the major line spacing to zero. And now there's no lines that are thicker than the other. So I'm going to separate this and then just connect it with the merge node. Boom. They connect it to media out. So now I'm going to change the rotation of the grid because you can see it's rotated. So I'm going to rotate it by 45 degrees like that. And then I'm going to change the resolution of this background node. So to do that, click on the background node, go to image, uncheck auto resolution, and then set the width and height to the same value. So 1920. And I'm also going to change the row and column cells to the same value as well. So they're both 20 and 20. And then I'm going to add a transform node. And in between these nodes, I'm actually going to add a resize node, which basically brings it back to the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And then using the transform node, I'm going to adjust the size and now you can see it's a grid like that which is pretty cool and then after that i'm basically just gonna change the thickness of the grid lines to 0.01 on both and now it's time to make the cube part now the red 2d cube is made up of eight lines and i recreated it using eight merge background and polygon nodes and with the polygon nodes i basically just drew out each individual line and then after I traced out all the lines, I basically played with the position and the length so that the starting point and the end point of the pattern itself matches closer and closer to the cube at the start and the logo at the end. So to recreate that logo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this fusion composition longer and then I'm going to basically just add a background which only shows up after frame 50. So I'll set the alpha and then keyframe the alpha so that after frame 50 it turns black. Pick screen color, do that, hit OK. And now let's recreate this graphics here. So to a assist me in the shapes I'm just gonna unplug this background so I can actually see the grid itself and I'm gonna add another background node and then I'm gonna pick screen color I'm gonna match the background node to the same color as this I'm also gonna disconnect this background node because I want to be able to see the grid while I'm drawing out my mask what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect all the shape layers now I'm gonna drag down a polygon mask and then I just drew the MKBHD logo now the MKBHD logo is pretty simple it's basically just two parallelograms stuck on top of each other and I basically just recreated it with two merge nodes two background nodes nodes and two polygon nodes and then I simply just drew them out and I dialed in the right settings uncheck a solid and then expand the border width and I'm gonna expand it until it says value 0.005 and I'm also gonna expand the border width here as well until it says 0.005 and now it looks like that and now at the moment it sort of looks like a badly drawn version of this and that's because of these rounded corners here so I don't need to see the grid anymore so I'm gonna reconnect this background one and to fix these rounded corners what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this polygon node and then you see this border style right here I'm gonna change it to miter for both of them and now you can see sharp corners now <laughs> So now I'm going to take these merge nodes. I don't really want them on the same line. I'm going to merge these two into this one merge node. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the output of this and then stick it there. Add another merge node. And then I'm going to drag this background node here and then make it transparent. And I'm going to drag another background node here make it transparent and then show the media out and now you can see that it works and then next I'm going to drag this away and then I'm going to add a transform node which is going to allow me 
to uh, shrink this pattern here you can see just like in the video where it just sort of shrinks hit a keyframe on size go to the end and then make the size just around 0.5 and then i'm going to tweak the spline and then i'm going to go to the three dots show only selected tool and then i'm going to zoom to fit select these keyframes and then i'm going to have the keyframe start fast and then slow down so to start fast and slow down you're basically just going to drag this slider down and then drag this to be flat and it's going to start fast and slow down just like that. Now next thing I'm going to do is change the opacity of this merge node so that this pattern appears only after frame 51. So I'm going to make the blend 0, add a keyframe, go to the next frame, then make the blend to 1. And now I'm going to reconnect all of these nodes here. So reconnect that to there, then reconnect that to there. And then off camera I added a transform node to everything. And then I basically just animated the transform nodes so that in the beginning it's a little bit high. And then near the middle of the cube animation it goes a little bit low. And then near the end of the cube animation I got it to return back into its original position. Now the original MKBHD intro actually did not come back up. It only went down, but I had it come back up because I just thought it was more satisfying. It makes it seem like the cube's on like a trampoline. Now it goes a little bit slow, so I'm going to make it a compound clip, create, and then I'm just gonna speed it up. And now this is what it looks like. Yeah, it's pretty much the same actually. And then, off camera, I added a background layer and I basically just matched the background of the original MKBHD intro in the first part. And then I added some text, and then I selected the font that's similar to the one in the original intro. And then I just turned up the tracking so that the letters are very far apart. So now I'm gonna open up Blender. This is the hard part. Oh, jeez. So now I'm going to recreate the beginning part with all these weird shapes and stuff. So the reason why I'm doing the first part in Blender is because Blender is a 3D program that I'm more familiar with when it comes to 3D animation and stuff. So I'm actually going to delete this camera, and I'm going to make the light the sun, and then I'm going to decrease the power of the sun to like 5, which is enough. And then I'm going to add a camera, and then drag it this way. I'm just going to remove all rotation, and then I'm going to rotate the camera on the z-axis by 90 degrees, and rotate on the x-axis by 90 degrees. And now, the camera is on the ground facing at the cube. And then if I hit 0, you can see the camera view. If I hit 0 again, it goes out of it. So I'm going to move this back a little bit, and then go back to the camera. So something that they said they did in this original animation was actually make the view more of an orthographic view. And to do that, just go into your camera properties down here, change the type to orthographic, and now it's an orthographic view. No matter how much I move this cube away from the camera, it's still gonna stay the same size, which is pretty cool. I'm going to select the camera, go to this tab right here. So to assist me a little bit, I'm gonna check background images. I'm gonna add an image, and then change the type to a movie clip, open, and assuming you've downloaded the original video with the intro, you're going to go to downloads, go to the actual video, and open clip. And I'm gonna switch from render view to material preview, and now as you can see, the video is in Blender. The animation only lasts for 44 frames, so I'm gonna shorten it to 44 frames, and then just zoom in here so you can see that this cube basically just comes up from the bottom and just rotates and then that's the last frame now i'm just going to match this cube to that cube so basically it's s to scale r to rotate and then it's g to move so i'm just going to move it up like that it doesn't have to be perfect and i'm going to hit this button right here this button down here basically means that if you make a movement it's going to automatically keyframe it. So for this animation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink the cube a little bit and then bring it up here. And then when it falls down, I'm just going to bring the cube down there and I'm actually going to shrink the cube. And then I'm going to switch this to a graph editor. So now I can actually change the velocity of the cube. So it seems like this cube starts fast and then slows down. So to start fast and slow down, you can tell that this blue thing here is the height of the cube. So now it starts fast and slows down like that. And I'm actually going to do this. And now the cube is just boom. And then it just immediately stops moving. And now I'm going to go to this frame and I'm going to hit R to rotate to add a keyframe. And I'm going to go in the beginning and then I'm just going to go crazy on the rotation. Just change it like that. And then the cube's just going to spin. Now there isn't that much of a thud into the actual thing, so I'm gonna overshoot the animation a little bit. So I'm actually gonna overshoot it this way, and I'm just gonna extend this up. And now there's more of a thud when it stops moving. So I'm gonna switch it back to the timeline so it's not so overwhelming. Now if you look closely at this cube here, you may notice that one side is white, the other side's black, and the other side is this weird like crumpled up paper texture. And to recreate that, what you gotta do to the cube is go over here to the material editor, just hit new. I'm gonna go to the edit mode, change the face selection, click only these two faces, so these two faces that are on the other side of each other. 
the material number two here yeah, assign only these two that you selected to change will actually change if you have assigned the material to that part of the cube and the color that I want to change it to is black. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another material, hit new, using face selection, click this face of the cube, and then with my middle mouse button, drag around to the back, and then hit shift, click on the other face, and then I'm going to go to material number three, hit assign, and then I'm going to change the base color to green. Now the reason why I'm changing it to green is so that I can actually key the cube out and add this paper texture behind the cube. What I'm going to do is I'm going to render this cube completely separate. So I'm going to render this as a PNG sequence and then import it into DaVinci Resolve. To make a transparent PNG sequence, what you got to do is go to this tab called Render Properties, change the render engine to Cycles. Now the reason why you're changing it from EV to Cycles is because the EV render engine, as far as I know, does not support rendering out transparent PNG sequences. So next you're going to scroll down, expand Film, and then Transparent. And then you're going to go to this printer icon, make sure the file format in PNG and the color is set to RGBA and the reason why you want to set it to RGBA is because A means alpha and the alpha channel is the transparency of a part of an image and then you're going to set your OPA location so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new folder call it blender recreation I'm going to expand that folder make a new folder inside that folder and call it cube PNG sequence open that folder and then hit accept and then what you're going to want to do is go up here to render and then render animation boom now you can see that the render is done and you can see to recreate this cylinder right here is actually a lot simpler when it comes to the animation aspect of it because you can see it falls from the bottom and then just stops right there now because this cylinder is considered a primitive object which means that it's a very common shape there really isn't any shape modeling required you want to go up to add mesh and then cylinder and then you see down here where it says add cylinder I'm actually going to decrease the radius set it to like 0.65 I'm gonna increase the number of vertices and that's basically it you don't need to do that anymore and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna match the position here just rotate it like that S for scale G to bring it over here so you can see that I didn't exactly match the dimensions perfectly but it's fine so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add the green textures around this cylinder right here so I'm gonna go down to the material properties tab hit new then I'm going to go to edit mode, toggle this x-ray option so that now I can actually select all of these faces. Next thing that you're going to want to do is add another material slot, hit new, hit assign, and then change the base color from white to green. And then make sure the green values are all the way up. And now the entire side of the cylinder is green. The reason why I'm making it green is so that I can actually chroma key this part out of the cylinder and add that weird texture in the back. So now I'm going to match the animation. So I'm going to go back to object mode and I can see that the cylinder animation starts at frame 14. So I'm just going to hit S to sort of scale it up a little bit and then G to bring it down. So now the cylinder travels up and it's not rotating right now, I'll add the rotation later. And next what I'll do is I'll change this to the graph editor and zoom into the animation here. And now I'm going to have the animation start fast and slow down. And now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit R, make sure there's a rotation keyframe placed here. And I'm going to go to frame 14 and then I'm just going to go crazy on the rotation. So I'm going to rotate it this way, every direction there is. And then if you think the animation looks good, then change the output of the render to a different folder. I'm going to create a new folder called Cylinder PNG Sequence. Accept. Hit render. Hit render animation. And now it's going to render the cylinder animation. So now that the PNG sequence is done rendering, you're going to want to go back to DaVinci Resolve. So this is when I started encountering problems. I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to green screen a PNG without losing the alpha channel of the PNG itself. And apparently it's a bug with DaVinci Resolve which basically has no fix. So what I ultimately decided was to finish the rest in After Effects after like literally hours of struggling trying to fix it. So I'm just going to put it in here like this. And this is the video that came out of DaVinci Resolve. I even added the sound effects from the actual intro. And it's just this part that needs all the effects. So I'm going to import the paper texture and the stars pattern. And I'm also going to import these photos that I made with Blender. Along with the cube PNG sequence that I also made in Blender. And then I was basically lining the 3D animation up with the design. And now this is what the flying shapes looks like. Wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> so I've added the sky stars pattern. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that this sky star pattern 
is actually behind the cylinder, and then I'm gonna chroma key the cylinder so that it shows the star is behind. So first, I'm gonna track mat, and then alpha mat, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this layer, and then show this layer, and then I'm going to add a key light effect on here, pick the screen color, pick green, and now, as you can see, it's much easier than it was in DMG Resolve, and the star pattern is showing inside the cylinder. And now let's do the same with the cube. Now instead of the star pattern, I'm gonna import this crumpled paper texture. So I'm gonna scale it down, add an effect called motion tile, drag it down into the photo, and then drag the output width up, output height up, check mirror edges, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a brightness and contrast effect onto that layer, turn up the contrast, turn down the brightness, and then I'm gonna add a noise, just a little bit of noise. I'm gonna uncheck use color noise. I'm gonna select this image here, and then select the track matte mode, so alpha matte, and then I'm gonna duplicate this uh, cube layer. I'm gonna show it, add a key light effect, pick the screen color, just pick that green there, and now you can see it's pretty close, but then in the original video the, the paper photo is actually moving and this isn't, so I'm going to make it move. I'm gonna add a transform effect, drag it here, and then I'm just gonna make the rotation position and scale go crazy. And then I'm gonna add a posturize time effect, and then change the frame rate to around 7 frames a second. And now I gotta do the same thing with the cylinder, so I'm gonna have to add the shake and add the posturized time on the cylinder. Alright, so the next thing that I'm gonna try and recreate are these other primitive shapes. So, they are a lot easier than these two, because all they are is like literally just the edges of the actual shape. And I can just color them red and then just render it out and it would just work fine. I'm gonna add a cone, three vertices. Make it shorter like that. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a wireframe modifier and then turn up the thickness a bit. And then I'm going to add a texture and then just simply just color it red. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the end of the animation over here. And then I'm just going to flip it this way and then G. And now the triangle's up there. And then what basically happens is that the triangle comes from down here and then flies all the way up to there. So I'm just going to hit G, bring it down there. And then I'm just going to match rotation. And then I'm going to go to the graph editor. And then I'm just gonna start fast and then end slow, just like this. And then I just did the same for the other primitive shapes. For that little circle, I just used a torus, which I basically just rotated 90 degrees and animated it across the screen. And then I rendered it out using a different directory. Alright, so now that the PNG sequence is fully rendered, now I'm going to put it into After Effects. So last part's PNG sequence, and then I'm just going to select all these, check PNG sequence, hit import, drag it under everything else, and then I'm just going to render it out. And this is the finished product. So I really, really hope you enjoyed watching me struggle through this. If you loved it, please subscribe, and I'm going to see you guys in the next video. Bye!